Today is the 20th of February and we are going to do a video about a day at Heron's Bonsai. Not the usual run of the mill day, but there are bits of our routine jobs. But we also have Kevin Wilson here again. And we also have Chrissy. Some of you will know Chrissy. She Hello. used to run her own bonsai nursery, Bushikan Bonsai. So she's here with Kevin. And I also have my usual cameraman, Josh. And we're going to work on several trees. So this, as we say, is a day in the life of Heron's Bonsai. An unusual day. So we have here, Josh is going to work on one of these Japanese U's, Texas Cuspidata. And I'm going to ask Kevin to share the benefit of his wisdom to show how he tackles these trees. Let's show you one that he did recently. So this is the raw material that we get from Japan. I would say that these are at least 20 year old trees and he's produced this beautiful thing. It's going to be potted like that. Okay, at that yeah. angle. Yeah. I think we may even pot it today. It's quite safe. Yeah. All right, so if I can ask Kevin to explain because Josh is going to work he's going to have the benefit <coughs> of Kevin's wisdom as we are also going to get the benefit of his wisdom so tell us what you look for in a tree like that first of all the, I can see that it's got a lot of lovely movement. I mean it, uh, it's uh, really powerful at the base this yeah. tree yeah so you know you know that's that's quite encouraging straight away mm. yes but what I'm going to do yes I know this is in there for its health yeah uh -huh. but I'm going to take this sphagnum moss away because the first Thing that we need to think about. Do you have to yeah? take it out of pot as well? Um, no, I think we'll just uh, oh, okay. we'll just slightly uh, rub it off here, so we can see the extent of the nabari on there. Yeah, as you can see, yeah, it's, I mean it's quite a uh, substantial nabari. Yeah, mm -hmm. lovely. Yeah, that that indicates power straight away. Yeah, okay. So now the thing I do right is I look for the line through the tree. Mm -hmm. So what I'm dis I'm disregarding all the branches, right? I'm just looking for a line to the top. Mm -hmm. Um, and Josh, if you can get me some blocks, man, then uh, we'll uh, we want to ch definitely change the orientation on this, yeah? So what I'm going to do right here yeah, is um, I'm now going to find the line for it, yeah? So I think immediately, yeah, when we turn it like this, yeah. like okay. that, yeah, mm -hmm. you know? Makes the line more dramatic. It makes the line more dramatic. And the other thing is, is some of those branches are quite thick at the top, mm -hmm. yeah? So we actually need to use some of those as the apex, yeah? Okay. So I because think... Because it's a bit truncated at the top. Yeah, it's a little bit, you know, okay. we're getting into a large amount of uh, okay. thickness, yeah, with these branches. Um, so we're going to have to remove some, yeah? Okay, so now I think that's the line, yeah? In there. And it doesn't have the correct movement, yeah? The thing with the, the, the trees here, they should look like they're balanced. And there's something slightly unbalanced here for my eye, yeah? So what I'm going to do is pull it this way, and then suddenly the balance appears, yeah? Like this. And I think possibly either what I'm going to do is use this as the apex, okay. or this one as the apex, okay. but one of those has to go, yeah? And I was talking to Josh, yeah, you know what I mean? He's got a, he's got an understanding of trees, a tree surgeon, yeah, and loves trees, yeah. And we were talking earlier on, yeah, and he was, we were both commenting on this particular branch. Uh -huh. Now this particular branch as a principal branch is fantastic, mm -hmm. yeah. Really? Even though it's thick? Even though it's thick, yeah, because what it does, yeah, is that's powerful, yeah. Okay. If we're going to use a thin one, yeah, as a principal branch, it doesn't look the same oh, at all, because yeah, you know? people normally just look for the thin branches. Why all the thin branches? Well, I will. Do, I mean, if oh. I could do that, I would do that. But oh. we have some thick, thick oh, branches. So that's yeah. not a bad thing. But this is a beautiful oh, principal okay. branch, okay. Yeah, you know, and it's also like something, you know, like a friendship branch. Oh, okay. You know, sometimes in Japan, yeah, we have a very long branch. Yeah, yeah that's considered to be a friendship branch. So I think possibly we this call is, it a no. coat hanger. Yeah. <laughs> But I think that's what we're going to do is make a friendship branch here with this branch. Okay. You know, just to, um, you know, it would be a standard generic bonsai, yeah, you know what I mean, if we just didn't think about it in this way, yeah. So that's what we're going to do, yeah. So what I'm going to do is uh, put some asymmetry into the tree uh -huh. now, yeah. So I'm just going to... I'm just going to... I'm going to cut this out because it's right in the front. 
I'm going to keep this one as a gin. Oh. And obviously, what we'll do is sort of we'll tear this and wire yeah, this, okay. you know. And obviously, that will be the first branch uh -huh. on that side, yeah. Maybe not even that one. I might even use this one. This might even be cut, yeah. Um, now, which one shall I use at the top? Obviously, yeah, this part here, yeah, is going to be um, carved. Carved. Mm -hmm. You know, so, you know, we've got a, we can do a lovely little tension, yeah, at the top there with this. Um, okay, what shall I use? <clears throat> this probably what I'm going to do is use this one. I'll use both of those here. There's quite a lot of branches on that. But I'm going to take this one out. This is too much. But you see, you know, you know the thing is, right, is everyone gets caught up here yeah, in the in the moment where they're trying to choose all their branches here, yeah, you know what I mean? But if you uh, decompartmentalize it, mm -hmm. yeah, and start with the trunk line and the orientation and the top, you can't go wrong, yeah, you know what I mean? Okay. It's, it's not so complex, yeah, you know? Yeah. yeah, you're breaking it down into smaller units, yeah, that can be, uh, that can be understood, yeah? So I think possibly... The other thing I learned way back was um, something that Peter Adams said to me, of all people, yeah? Peter said to me, uh, uh, simplify your designs, you know what I mean, you know, so uh, cut your asymmetry in and simplify your design. Because if it's too complex, yeah, you're, you're in trouble. But well, you that see, is going to be the apex of the back. That's going to be the, yeah, but it won't be the back, yeah. By the oh. time we've carved this, yeah, it'll actually be in the front. In the front, okay. You know, this that's is why you're making straight. the tree lean like that. That's right, that's okay. why I'm making it lean like that. Also, yeah, it looks more balanced, yeah. You can see how much we've got to work with there, yeah. But the other thing is, right, you think, oh, well, they cut all those branches off. How the hell is it going to make a bonsai tree out of it? But, you know, it's what I said last time. It's the story of the tree, yeah? So you have to show the snow, yeah, on the tree. You know, it's a mountain tree. It's got dead wood. So all of these branches will come down. And by the time I've finished, yeah, you won't know the difference that I've cut any branches off. Oh, I see. You know, so it'll be a full tree, yeah? So, um, okay, that's about it, yeah, for setting up the branches. Um, and cutting off and, you know, using what we need. We've so got... you took pretty quick decisions as to what to remove, isn't it? We've removed four pretty hefty branches, really. Yeah, I, I mean, mean, it's a, yeah, it, it seems like it's quick. Yeah, okay. But if you think, yeah, you know, when you do bonsai every mm. day of your life, oh. yeah, you know, um, you know, th then okay. you, know, you know what you're doing. Yeah, you so know what, I mean? what you've done is keeping the front clear. Yeah. And the main branches that you know you're going to use and you're going to have this original apex going to be ginned. That's going to be ginned. And then there's going to be that back branch which has got quite good taper going yeah. to be the apex. That will be the apex. All right. So obviously then, yeah, we've got, you know, and the other thing is, is the story, yeah, which we spoke about last time. Um, you know, if there's any damaged areas, yeah, you know, what we have to do is uh, actually indicate the damage that went on. So this one is like rounded and healed off, yeah, you know what I mean? Mm. What I'll do is come into there, yeah, and, and, and put some more damage here. And when I do this, yeah, I'll come into here and make the damage come down here further, yeah. So you're going to open that out? I'll open it out, yeah, you know. Um, and this is coming too too near to you, yeah, you know what I mean? So I'll probably, I'll probably diminish this, yeah, okay. you know. Because it's, the other thing is an aggressive gin. Mm. Of what I call an aggressive gin, mm. if it's pointing at you, yeah, mm. it's not very good, yeah, it's not welcoming, yeah, mm. you know. You know, what, what you should be doing when you're uh, walking up to a tree is you, in mm. your mind, you should want to walk up to the yeah. tree and sit underneath it. Okay, let's you know? try and be a bit controversial. I was just yeah. looking at the okay. tree like this. Yeah. Wouldn't that also be a possible front? That could be a front, you mm. know. It's still powerful, you still got the line. Still powerful, you? the line's still there. And also, right, yeah, you've got your lazy ash, yeah, which is uh, classical, yeah. Um, but the thing that determined me yeah. to, to this design, yeah, this way, mm. is you'd still have the lazy ash, but yes. it's more of a okay. spiral, but it's this principal okay. branch. Okay, all right, here, good. You know? Okay, you know? good. All right. So, 
So you're marking the areas you're going to carve? Just going to mark the areas where we're going to remove the bark. Okay. And I'll do it in marker and chalk, yeah, so there's no mistake, yeah, you know what I mean, it'll pop out then, yeah. But you can see, right, I'm keeping the same rhythm, yeah, mm. um, all the way through the yeah. tree, yeah. Uh, it's one of the things that, you know, um, I probably learned off of looking at the pictures of Mr. Kimura's work, uh, the great master, Kimura, and... Um, what he tends to do is everything has the same rhythm, yeah, from the root, yeah, to the tip. Yeah, of course. Yeah. You know, so that's what we're trying to do. There's a natural patina of maybe, you know, uh, 200 years, 300 years there. And obviously it's going to have the same movement and the same look, the same natural look. So that's what we're going to do, yeah, is keep that same rhythm, yeah. This here I'm reflected in the dead wood. And this here, yeah, I'll do the same as well. I'll just reflect the the tree shape, yeah, the swell, the mm. verticality of that tree, yeah. And I'll get So that will lead into this? That will lead into this one. Yeah. This one leads that way, yeah, it's got the same movement. Mm -hmm. The tip of that leans off this way, yeah, yeah. you know. You know, if, if we don't take too much off, that will become a live vein in there. Mm. So actually I'm gonna now mark it with chalk as well, so we've got no, no mistake where it's uh, coming. Off. So it's always wise to mark it, otherwise some people carve without well, any plan, isn't it? They go I've, willy -nilly. I've done workshops here yeah, where people have uh, actually gone round and, uh, and ring bolt the whole apex oh. or something, yeah, because it's not marked out for them, yeah. I'm sure Josh won't do that, yeah, he's, uh, he's a tree surgeon, he knows what he's doing, yeah, but, uh, you know, just, you know, obviously people at home are going to try this, yeah, so I think it's probably best to mark out yeah, where you're going and then you won't make any mistakes okay. yeah, you know so that's about it yeah so i'm going to leave that to you now josh here to remove those areas then i'll come back and carve it yeah i mean you know and then so you bring off that, again yeah. what we're going to i was just saying uh, you know cut the top off yeah once you've um once you've you've got your main branches, yeah, you know what I mean. Then you've, you use all the smaller branches. Mm -hmm. When you've got a tree with thicker branches like this, yeah, you know, then you come down, you leave the thicker branches, yeah, yeah you choose them. So you've got your asymmetry, yeah, and you've got a framework, and then you start using the smaller okay. branches off of that, yeah, you know what I mean. That's what okay. I was explaining Sorry. to Josh. Cut the cut. Yeah. Kevin. So, you want me to cut that so let's talk something about the tools. We are going to cut this lumpy bit off and we brought, I'm not here selling chainsaws, I'm not a chainsaw salesman, but Kevin was just remarking that this little tool here is ideal for cutting branches like this. And the advantage, Kevin, you were saying, rather than a reciprocating saw. Well, a saw. reciprocating saw, yeah, obviously is reciprocating. Yeah. So what it tends to do is shake the roots to hell. Judder. You know? It judders the yeah. whole thing, you know. Whereas this is a smoother cut, yeah, you know what I mean. I don't know what it's going to react like to the yew wood, but okay. I'm going to hand over to Josh because are... Josh is a, he's a professional tree surgeon, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, I, you know, obviously I've got a chainsaw license, but... Okay. He's the man for the job. Yeah. But for things like this, you know, a lot of people will criticize on YouTube. Oh, you're not doing health and safety. You should be wearing a mask and gloves. But I think within reason, no, just, you can just, be just, fairly... Just goggles. Yeah, it's, that's what it says you should be using. Okay. Hold on. All right. What are those? What are those? Uh, protective glasses, oh, yeah. But actually, they're prescription ones, so oh, I might send you wobbly. See. Yeah, right. <laughs> see if they work or not, yeah. <laughs> No, don't be hungry. Okay. Three seconds. Three seconds to cut that lump off. If you were to use a silky saw, it would give you about <laughs> five to ten minutes. There you are. And a sweat on. <laughs> so, as a matter of interest, uh, I don't know how intensively or how rapidly they're grown, but let's count the rings on this. Some of you who can pause your video 
You can have a count and see how many rings there are. Let's see how old this tree is because some of the trees which they grow in Japan, they are masters at growing trees. So they may not be as old as would appear. So I'll tell you how old this tree is in a minute. So while we are counting the rings, you can count the rings as well. The inner rings are very close together. So the inner rings are, that alone is about 12 to 15. The outer rings are another seven, I would say. So we would say that this could be like 25 year old. About 25 year old tree, there you go. 25 year old tree, true age. And I can believe it, but don't forget, they've been put in pots for the last three to five years. So it would have slowed the growth down quite a bit. So there we go. So we're ready to do the next stage. So we're removing more bark, are we? So let me show you what Josh has done so far. He's removed the bark there. He's cut the apex out. And this is prior to, what is next? Are we going to carve this before we do any wine? Yeah, I'll carve it before we um, do wine. Do do anything else okay. because uh, obviously when the wire goes okay. on here, you're going to end up with a small industrial accident. Yeah, yeah. so okay. we'll uh, we'll do the carving. Okay. Get that out of the way, and then just can carry on All with right. the wiring. Okay. Yeah. Good job, man. Yeah, so we can see the beauty of the trunk now. Yeah, Get a wire brush. I'm going to split that, man, with a pair of splitters, yeah? Oh, wait, Which yeah. one? So, the one at the oh, bottom. Oh, yeah, that? Yeah. To make it smaller? Yeah, it's too it's too aggressive, yeah. Okay, know? all right. So we have to get it close yeah. and away from us. Okay, great. So we'll do, we'll do all that next, yeah? yeah. And, uh, okay. Get the power tools out and start becoming noisy, yeah? Like a dentist shop. <laughs> we are now ready to carve this bit. And I was just observing what choice of tool Kevin was making now this is the terrier is it the bigger terrier yeah there are two terriers there's the little one there's a little one yeah for sabamikis oh this one yeah oh. that's for going inside yeah and okay. carving inside yeah? yeah obviously you don't need the big one oh. because what you're going to do there's is one going in the hole no you're going to tear your outside oh. um uh, line yeah okay. and you need your outside line of the tree yeah for yeah. your shadow yeah okay. so um you know for profiles and cutting the first cut, yeah, you know what I mean? This is really good. Oh. And then you move on to this Why one. Why can't yeah, you use the small one for profile? Would it um, take too No, long? the trouble is, right, yeah, you've got more control over this one because it's see. got a bigger head, yeah, you know what I mean? The smaller mm -hmm. head tends to whiz round. Okay. So if you've got, you know, if you're putting this inside. Oh, I see. And it's okay. got an outside edge, it doesn't, okay. it won't All come right, out of okay. the hole, yeah, so that's right. so basically you can connect it, it up. Yeah, you know? yep. Josh? Let's see if it's off first. Yeah, man. This bigger tree doesn't shudder as much as the little one if you do this sort of work. No, if you, that's why I said, yeah, this is only for doing the insides. The inside, if you try and do the outside work with this, yeah, it will spin off and you'll do some oh, uh, damage to your okay. cambium layer. Yeah, that's but you can see fun. this cuts like butter, yeah. Yeah, you know. So these are the only two bits you really need, is it? Well, I would say that you need those two bits, yeah. Um, there's other things, there's different profiles yes. that you might need, yeah, oh. for, for doing different things, yeah, but that and um, this little tool in here, if I can find it, um, yeah, this, no, it's not that one, I might have to tip it all out to find it, yeah, so, I'll show that one in okay. a minute, yeah. But is it yeah. for Makita or for the Dremel? Uh, for the Dremel, yeah. Dremel, okay. Which oh. I call the pencil, yeah. you know what I mean, it's, uh, but yeah, for, for doing any major carving, yes. yeah, you know what I mean? These are the, these are the two that you'll need, yeah? And you see how this cuts like yeah. butter, yeah, you know? Like it's just... And if you're not aggressive with it, yeah, you know, it'll just take out the amount of wood you want to take out, you know? So you are nearly to press it? No, it's hardly anything, I'm, you know? Obviously, I've got a firm grip on the machine, okay. but I'm not putting a huge amount of pressure, yeah? Cool. 
It's always a good idea, Josh, yeah, when you're, when you're doing any uh, splitting, yeah, to make sure you've got a long-handled pair of uh, your firm um, uh, gym pliers, you know. You just get that much more fulcrum. If you've got a short one, yeah, you'll find it difficult, yeah, to rip your wood, yeah, but if you've got a bigger fulcrum, yeah, on the, yeah. On the gym pliers. Things happen like this, right, when you're doing it, like a little tiny piece of wood there, you know. And uh, some people might well go, oh, I had this thing in my head, right, yeah, to remove all of that, yeah, you know. But you get a happy little accident like that, yeah, you know what I mean? And it's yeah. really natural, yeah, you know. And you need to know when to leave those things, yeah, you know. And uh, as I said in the last video, yeah, I was talking to Peter, yeah. Um, a small gin, yeah, is an old gin, yeah. A long gin is a new gin, yeah. So what we're trying to do is make this as small as possible, yeah. Yeah. Just to make it ancient. See, the, the carving is, uh, is all very well and good. Um, but it's just a little trick, yeah, you do, and you need to do it, yeah. <laughs> if you can do this, yeah, it's, uh, it's much better. You know, you get a much more natural effect, yeah. Wow. You can see that, yeah, you know what I mean? It's stunning. It looks like an old gin, you know. It's just nice. Um, just going to change the shape on these slightly, yeah? Yep. Yeah. That's a little bit symmetrical, yeah, you know what I mean? So we'll just put a little... You know, that's by no means finished, yeah, you know what I mean? But you, know, you have a start, yeah, you know what I mean? There's something quite dramatic there in there now. Yeah, nice. Mm. So what I'm going to ask you to do now, Josh, right, is get rid of that one, yeah? Because what I'm so, I said about everything being in the same rhythm, you know, everything's in the same rhythm all the way from the root to the apex, yeah? Now, this one just isn't in rhythm. There's no way we could move that, yeah, you know? So that has to be removed, yeah? Unlike this one, yeah, that's showing the snow, yeah? Yeah. We, we really like this here, you know what I mean? And I'm going to manipulate this. I'm going to show you another technique, yeah? With this when we put the wire on, yeah? And uh, it's quite clever, yeah, you know what I mean? We're going to keep this one. Um, do you know what? It's right out the back, you know? I think uh, probably you could have a little practice on that, Josh. Sweet. You know, just have a rip like I did on this one, yeah? You know what I mean? And so you know what you're doing, yeah, you know? And this one we'll remove entirely, yeah? Yeah. <coughs> But this one, yeah, I think what I'm going to do is a little technique, yeah, that I learned off of Marco in Venizia, yeah. <coughs> when he first left Camira's garden, I, I hounded him, yeah, to come to my garden, yeah, because I wanted to know some techniques of the great master, yeah, you know what I mean, definitely, you know. And, uh, and Marco came, and I said, show me something you, you haven't shown anybody, yeah. And he did this technique there where he put wire around the branch like that, that he was going to gin, a fresh branch, mind. And then he twisted it with two pairs of gym pliers, yeah? So the whole thing was spiralled inside, yeah, you know? And uh, then he said a year later, yeah, when that's set, you know, you then split the end right and pull it, yeah? And that piece of bark comes all the way around you and you get a natural... And I was like, oh my God, yeah, man, you know? So, the, you know, there's stuff like that, yeah, that's just fantastic, that, yeah, yeah, crazy. yeah. You learn off of people, yeah, you know what I mean? It's, uh, it's just things that people have tried, yeah, you know what I mean? I also had David Benevente in my garden, yeah, a few years back, you know, when he used to come over and spend holidays with me, yeah, you know. And uh, we, we did an experiment you know, about carving a tree out. It was also a Kimura technique that he'd seen. He was privy to a few of the, you know, the famous things that the, the Kimura did behind closed doors. Yeah. And um, because he was working for Luis uh, Vallejo. And um, we carved out the centre of a pine tree, yeah, that was straight, yeah, completely. So it was just barred both sides, yeah, and then a hole right through the middle, yeah, and then put a bar on it, yeah, and twisted it, yeah, so we ended up with a twisted pine, yeah. Nice. So, I mean, there's, there's, there's endless techniques, yeah, you can have for manipulating trees, yeah, but 
So, yeah, what I'm going to get you to do, right, yeah, is, um, is clean this one off completely, mm -hmm. cut that one off, and then also, right, yeah, take the Dremel with one of these uh, sanding flaps, yeah, and clean off all these areas, yeah? Just clean off the burrs, yeah? Yeah. You know. So that's your next job, yeah? Cool. So okay. let me show you what we've done so far. This is what Kevin has got to. He's hollowed out that stump of a trunk to make the taper less uh, obtrusive, more convincing, and there's going to be a new leader. So this is how the tree is shaping up. This is all the carving work. Look at our debris here. And it's our lunch break at the moment, so we're going to walk into the Zen meditation hall. We're not going to meditate, but we're going to have lunch. So this is all in a day's work. It's a dry day, but not sunny. But it's pleasant enough. The temperature is 14 degrees centigrade. And here we go. So this is our lunch. Very nice too. Thank you, Peter. Yeah, it's absolutely uh, delicious. It really is. Look at this. This is the Indian tricolor. Orange, white, and green. Mm. This is the Japanese radish. Lovely. So, bon appetit. Bon appetit. Mm.